This video will start that uh, bottom row and we'll start off with the um, Boeing 747 Space Shuttle Transport, um, which you see there. And that's an Academy kit. And here's the instructions. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, and here's some of my references. And also for references, um, you may have seen in a previous video in my home movies of uh, Kennedy Space Center, I showed this family picture. Well, on the flash drive that this picture came on, I also got these few pictures. They, they put like 15 pictures in there. And these were a few of them, so I also used these as references. And um, so going back to the instructions, I think the only thing I learned from that was more or less how the um, shuttle should look. So I used that for references on the shuttle and then this Wikipedia entry um, for a few more uh, shots and then found some shots out on the Internet. Um, but it's a pretty cool kit, you know, fun to build. I like that you could, you know, it had this shell, uh, and I'll show that on the turntable um, to make it more aerodynamic uh, to improve the airflow over the tail. While the U.S. space shuttles were able to travel faster and further than any other aircraft yet flying, unless on a space voyage, they had to rely on other means of transport to get them from landing sites back to Kennedy Space Center's launch facilities. To provide these services, NASA obtained a Boeing 747 airliner from American Airlines in the late 1970s. Designated SCA, Shuttle Carrier Aircraft, it was extensively modified by Boeing. The cabin was stripped and the fuselage strengthened to accommodate the special cradle on top. A pair of vertical stabilizers were installed on the tail wings to increase its stability during captive flights, and the avionics and engines were upgraded. The shuttle, about the size and weight unfueled of a medium jet airliner, is secured to the SCA's cradle after being lifted by a special hoist, also used for post-flight servicing. To reduce drag caused by the exposed rocket engines and improve airflow over the SCA's tail, a streamlined shroud is attached to the rear of the shuttle. While the unfueled shuttle provides no power assistance, its well-designed lifting characteristics are utilized. SCA pilots report that the flight characteristics, even with such a large object on its back, are basically the same as in normal configuration. The SCA was initially used to facilitate the earliest shuttle test flights, during which the shuttle was carried aloft and released as the SCA went into a shallow dive, and the shuttle flew, essentially as a glider, back to Edwards Air Force Base on its own. In 1988, following the Challenger tragedy, NASA procured a second 747 from Japan Airlines, which was first used in 1991 to ferry the newly manufactured Endeavour shuttle from Palmdale, California to Kennedy Space Center. On its rear mounting structure, it is labeled with the tongue-in-cheek instruction stencils, Attach Orbiter Here, and the warning, Black Side Down. I hope you'll come back for more before YouTube builds, and as always, thanks for watching, and happy modeling.